Now, if you guys saw my other video with the CyberPower UPS, I will be reviewing this one today for you with a bit of a comparison between that one and my experiences. So if you're interested in UPSs, check out that other video, it'll be up in the card somewhere. But let's get to this. So before I start, I do want to mention that this was sent over by Eaton for my fair, honest and unbiased review. Nobody gets a free pass on this channel. But I did want to mention that because I think honesty and integrity are the most crucial thing to any review channel. Should you get a UPS? Yes, absolutely. If you do care about your computer, 100%. Um, the reason being is if your computer is midway through a process and it gets power killed to it, it can really f up your operating system. So yes, if you do care about your computer, I would definitely suggest picking up a UPS. Um, it could potentially save you a huge headache or replacing parts. And if you don't know what capacity you need, I did go over it in the previous video where I show you how to calculate how much wattage you need. Head over there, watch that section, and I'll see you in a bit. And on the packaging, Eaton actually provide an estimated runtime based on the unit. So with this unit, uh, they're estimating about 30 minutes on a 200 watt load. So that gives you an estimate of how long. Comparing this to CyberPower on their website, they had a really handy graph. But it's a nice thing to have because your the likelihood of you being bang on 200 is, is very slim. And it's a non-linear graph, as in if you double the wattage, you're not going to halve the time, you're going to be significantly more than halving the time. As I mentioned before, this is a 5S 1500 LCD, but it should be a very similar experience compared to the others in the Eaton 5S product family. And I'll drop a link below if, you, if you're looking to pick one of those up. The unit has a max capacity of 1500 volt amps or 900 watts. Data line protection, which prevents power surges that travel through the coaxial telephone and ethernet lines from causing damage to electronics. It is simulated sine wave, which is not as good as pure sine wave, but will be fine for well-filtered and well-regulated power supplies found in most computers and electronics. It has automatic voltage regulation, which provides clean and consistent AC power by automatically regulating under voltages and over voltages when wall power has minor fluctuations. It has a three-year warranty. The topology is line interactive, passing through power until there's a power outage, and then it switches over to battery mode. This is better for battery longevity. The UPS can be managed from a connected computer using the UPS companion application, but there is no option for remote management. There's a connected device guarantee of $150,000. So if any of your devices were to break because of a fault with the UPS, then you're covered up to that amount. As you can tell, these are very similar specifications to the CyberPower CP series I reviewed before. The unit is 9.8 inches tall, 3.4 inches wide and 15 inches deep. You get five surge protected outlets and five surge protected outlets with battery backup. The ones labeled as master and eco work together by not providing power to the eco outlets when the master is detected as off. This is a great feature to see. Connection to the computer is handled through USB and you also get ethernet and coax connections for data line protection while also providing a breaker reset button at the bottom. So how about we unbox this thing? Let's do this. I'm trying my best to get it all on camera for you guys. This thing is heavy. Like, I mean, really heavy. The CyberPower UPS, I reasonably struggled to pick up and hold with one hand. There's no way I'm holding this with one hand comfortably. Like, I'd be able to hold it, but it would be an actual workout. Let's get this out of the packaging. I would probably recommend that you do this and lie it flat. To then slide it out. Oh. There we go. All right, I'll pop the box there for a second. So this is the UPS itself, and we've got nice instruction manual. That might come in handy. That probably will come in handy. Um, here we go. This thing's a tank. If you don't know who Eaton are, they're actually quite big in the commercial space for UPSs and battery backups. So that actually holds a lot of weight in the consumer space. A lot of people trust them because when they go to work, they see Eaton, and they know that their servers are running from Eaton UPSs. So it gives you a lot of promise that Eaton have bought that technology from the commercial space into the consumer space. So I'm quite excited to have a look at this. But it looks a lot prettier than I thought it would. Um, I looked online and it, it looked, I thought it looked kind of ugly, but that's quite a sleek box. So first observations, we've got an integrated power cable. Um, so that's not going to be very easy to replace if you have an issue. Other than that, on the back, We've got down this side is your surge protection. 
and down this side is your surge protection with battery backup. Um, noteworthy points is we've got master and eco control here and then eco control for these three sections and then these two, these three are unlabeled. Um, here it looks like we've got the breaker reset switch. We've got coaxial in and out. We've got ethernet in and out. I wonder why that's flipped around. And then your USB 2.0 type B. And this is how you'll interface with the computer. First point to really nitpick, and this is a nitpick because you're not going to interface with it very frequently. But in and out, the fact that they're two different waves rounds, that really annoys me. Um, I come from software products, so interface and user interface design where people are constantly using the interface and it needs to be as intuitive as possible. Having those different way rounds is, oh, it actually bugs me. Um, but it's, it's not an issue once you have this set up. You're not going to be swapping it very often, are you? So over here, we've got battery connection required before use. Refer to user guide. So this is really important. It looks like the battery needs to be connected internally before you can actually use the UPS. So don't go trying to plug this in and try and turn it on thinking that everything's going to power up and be perfect. It requires an extra step for you which I don't mind if that's how they want to ship it. I'm sure that they have their reasons. All right, round to the front. There we go. We have our on off switch, um, what looks like a selection button, I guess. And then this button that I actually don't know what it does. Also in the box is the USB type A to type B cable, which I'll show you here. Just that. Type A to type B. This will connect your UPS to the computer. I haven't seen a cable this color in so long. It kind of annoys me. I've got to admit, I really, really wish this was black. Um, it might just be because I'm an enthusiast, but a cable this color has absolutely no business being put into a setup that's had this much time and attention put into it. So, nope. So let's get the battery connected so that we can power this up and have a play with it. So as per the user manual, you want to lie it flat and then slide off this front fascia down. It requires a little bit of effort. There we go. And that exposes the battery connection. This is quite nice because this is also step number one for replacing the battery if you ever need to in the future. So if you've worked with consumer electronics before, then you know red is typically positive and black is typically negative. This is also labeled on the battery um, connector itself. So if we get these in shot, Positive and negative there, positive and negative there. Do not mix these up. It will probably kill your UPS. So all that you need to do is plug them in with confidence. So three, two, one. Oh, that's a tough connector. There we go. And then we can see that's in place by that little lock. So now we just need to pop the cover back on, which we can do by pushing this in and eating facing upwards. Slot this into place and then just slide up. So let's go back up top and connect this to power. So now we're back up top and we followed the advice and guidance of this little sticker. I think it's time for a bit of a sexy peel. So sexy. I never get that right, do I? Never get that right. Anyway, let's plug this into power and have a look at the functionality of it. <laughs> Tell me what you see. Hopefully we see something on screen. Wait, so we've got battery indication on the top right. Um, that shows full, which is nice. Does that mean it's on? Let's see what on does. There we go. Now it's on. So hold the on button, hold the on button for a couple seconds and you can hear it's doing things. Okay, so we're cycling through settings at the moment. So it says that we've got 112 minutes. Again, good, we haven't got anything plugged in. Um, we're pulling from the wall, 119 volts. That's pretty standard for America. At an automating current rate of 60 Hertz, typical. 
And then going out of the UPS is 119 to 120 volts. Uh, that's fine. Uh, going out is 60 hertz. Then we've got a wattage reading, but because we don't have anything plugged into it, it's, it's showing nothing, which is fine. And a volt amps reading showing nothing again, fine. And background to the front where we have percentage and that's reading nothing. Cool, so what does this button do? I want to know what this button does. I should really read the instruction manual. So I guess let's plug some things into it. We'll power down my computer and have this all set up. So once you download, install and open up the companion app from Eaton, you'll notice that the application looks very bare bones. Comparing this to CyberPower's Power Panel Personal, Power Panel Personal is a much nicer designed application from a product perspective. In the first tab, which is UPS status, it shows which UPS you have and the current operating status, whether you're running on battery or utility, the battery capacity, the estimated runtime and the output load. The second tab, which is events, shows important notifications from the UPS. The settings tab allows you to specify your shutdown criteria. Being able to shut down the computer after running on battery for X amount of time, this allows us to shut down the computer quickly after a power outage, shut down the computer when battery time remaining is below X, and this allows us to keep the computer running for longer during a power outage. And third, shut down the computer when battery charge level is below X. And this is the same as the one before, but specifying a percentage instead of a time. So I'm going to specify that the computer shuts down after one minute of being disconnected from power so that we can test the UPS. Shutdown type allows us to specify if we want a full shutdown or to go into hibernate state. The next section, we can set energy consumption variables for reporting. An eco control is a great feature that allows you to turn off outlets when the master outlet is turned off. The reason that you might want to do this is if your computer is turned off, you might also want to have other devices turn off automatically, such as your monitors, speakers, lighting, anything that you can connect to it. Next, we can enable or disable the alarm. The system tray notification allows you to enable or disable the notification icon, pop-up messages, and quick access menu in the system tray. The language section allows you to change the language of the user interface. Software upgrade allows you to change how it checks for and installs updates. And the about section has exactly what you'd think it does. Now I'm gonna show you what UPS Companion looks like when there's a power outage. And as you can see, it's logged those events and notifications. So let me take you through the actual shutdown process of the Eaton 5S. As you can see, the UPS handles the cut in power with no issue. The UPS companion application updates with notifications of the imminent shutdown. This is also logged in the Windows notifications too. After the one minute mark, which is what we specified in the app, the computer shuts down gracefully. Throughout this process, the LCD display did not turn on, which is fine as it handled everything well. Plugging the UPS back into power, turning on the computer and entering Windows, Wait, what just happened? Yep, this is something that you need to be aware of. Do not turn your computer back on immediately after the UPS regains power. It will perform a power cycle on you, cutting power to your computer without warning. I've had this happen to me four out of the four times that I've tested it, and it seems that the proper way to reboot after a power outage is to wait for the UPS to be ready. Now there's no indication as to what that looks like, so I'll show you now. Please note that this is only an issue if the UPS has shut down your computer and has not happened to me if I've interrupted the shutdown process by reconnecting the power. So outside of the specifications highlighted earlier, which are very similar to the CyberPower unit I reviewed previously, the main thing to consider between the two UPSs is the ways in which they differ how they handle power outages and the shutdown process, and the setup and usability. And that's how I'm going to conclude this video. The Eaton UPS companion application needs a big update to its user interface. It's fine for commercial stuff, but for consumer, it's, it looks very outdated, especially compared to the CyberPower power panel. As for the shutdown process, the CyberPower unit that I reviewed does have a bug in the software where it really limits a core aspect of its functionality. Furthermore, the CyberPower unit really didn't shut down the computer as gracefully as the Eaton unit, but it did perform some additional steps after regaining power before allowing you to boot up your computer. 
The Eton 5S really needs to do something similar before allowing the computer to be booted up before the UPS is ready, preventing power going to the outlets on the back of the UPS and indicating something on the LCD screen would be a good implementation of this. And a much better implementation than allowing the user to boot from the UPS and having power cut to the computer midway through operation. Maybe this can be fixed with a firmware update, Eton? I will be speaking to them at some point, so check the comments in the description below and I'll let you know if they have an update for me. The Eaton 5S units are more expensive at every level of the product family compared to the CyberPower units, the CP, AVR, LCD units. This 1500 volt amp 900 watt Eaton unit can be found on Amazon for about $193, whereas the comparable CyberPower one is about $150. But Eaton is a more trusted brand, especially in the communities that I interface with, where I come from hardware development and product, and I really love the eco functionality. This is potentially a really nice thing to have for some people, but ultimately only you can really decide if the increase is worth it. So thanks for checking out the Eaton 5S 1500 LCD unbox test and review. Check the links in the video description for the latest and greatest price on these. And don't forget to subscribe and share the video out before you go. And why not check out some of my other videos, including the review of the CyberPower CP1000 AVR LCD. Otherwise, drop a comment, give me some thumbs, and I'll see you guys soon.